We read in the Bible that Jesus brought the dead Lazarus back to life. What if we can do the same now, but of course not using spiritual powers but with the help of our advanced technology? We will soon be saying hello to some of our old friends that are extinct 10,000 years ago. Researchers are underway to bring dead species like Oli Mammoth, Thylacine, Doodoo Bird and many others back to life. How is it even possible on Earth? What technologies are used to revive the dead? And finally, is it even ethical and safe? A species is considered extinct when the last one of them dies. It's estimated over 5 billion species are extinct as known to humans and there are currently 8.7 million species on Earth. Extinction happens due to environmental changes, genetic pollution like in the breeding or uncontrolled hybridization, climate changes, diseases, sexual selection, mass extinction and human-driven extinction. The doodoo birds in Mauritius were hunted down by Dutch colonists and thylacines, dog-like creatures with stripes on their bodies were slaughtered by European colonists in Australia. Some changes are inevitable. But is it possible to undo them? The recent advancement in genetics and gene editing technology offers plenty of hope in reviving extinct animals. But how do they do that? Colossal Biosciences, a de-extinction company, is on the verge of recreating thylacine. The first step is to sequencing the extinct animal's DNA, the genetic blueprint contained in every single cell of the body. Geneticists believe that it's easy to recreate a thylacine as there are hundreds of samples available around the world. However, the sample shouldn't be much older. After a species dies, the exposure to UV light and the action of bacteria break down the DNA into short fragments. The younger the sample, the more easier it is to recreate the species. Colossal Biosciences has a sample which is a baby taken from its mother's pouch after the mom was shot dead. It was immediately dropped in alcohol which very well preserves the DNA. The next step in the de-extinction process is to find the most closest living relative with thylacine. Luckily, Danot and thylacine share 95% of similar DNA structure. Now, the geneticists will edit the genes of Danot using CRISPR, the Nobel Prize winning genome editing method. Once the genome is reconstructed, it can be implanted in the womb of the closest living relative. If everything goes well, we would have resurrected a dead animal. Likewise, woolly mammoth that lived 10,000 years ago shares similar DNA structure with the Asian elephant and it can be recreated. However, it won't be the exact copy of the original, but it will be a hybrid that can be called Mammophon. Gene editing method is not the only option to recreate the extinct animals. In another method, scientists use cloning technology to bring back the dead. In 2003, Pyrenean Ipex, an extinct goat, was successfully cloned, but unfortunately died shortly after the birth due to lung defect. Although the resurrection project may sound exciting, we may not know what the results might cause. The recreated species may upset the existing ecosystem as they may have new species evolved to take over the extinct species. The climatic conditions in which these creatures lived are much different than the ones we have now. For example, the wild grass that woolly mammoth fed on is also extinct. So it can be hard for them to adapt to the new habitat. However, thylacine was extinct only 100 years and the same habitat still exists in Tasmania and Australia. It can be easy for them to thrive once again in the ecosystem. Many raise concerns about spending huge resources on bringing back the extinct animals and why not preserve the existing extinct ones that are on the verge of extinction. But geneticists say that de-extinction technology can help in saving endangered species as well. What do you think about the de-extinction project? Is it good to recreate the dead or should we focus on saving the species that are currently occupying the earth? Comment now.